<laughs> that was funny though. That would be so Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the Pamela J Show. It is Thursday, November 21st, I believe, in the DMV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are here having a good time. We were <laughs> telling them a funny story about halls and a sweater and singing, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> the halls got stuck to my sweater. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so we're telling that funny story. But how's everybody doing? I hope everybody is well. Um, Today is going to be one of those serious shows um, that we put together. I know that this is orchestrated by the law because of all of the issues that we had just to get here today. Um, I want you to take an opportunity to share the show. I want you to take an opportunity to like the show, invite people in. If you miss the show today, my YouTube channel will be up and it will be running by tomorrow. So you can share this show tomorrow and a week from now we'll be on the WBGR Gospel Network. I want to say hi to my staff, um, everybody here at the WBGR Gospel Network, Aaron, the owners and all that. I am I welcome everybody and I'm grateful that everybody could be in here today. If you happen to call in, the number is 301-429-WBGR. That was the best way for me to remember those four numbers, which was to add the acronym WBGR. And so, um, like I stated earlier, today is going to be a very serious show. Some might even say it was controversial because of the topic matter. My topic today is the dynamics of the parent-teacher-student relationship. And how it was laid on my heart, I had a lot of people to email me, text me, call me, things of that nature, to give me various topic matters. And I want to thank everybody for doing that. Um, but one of the things that stuck out to me is the rising violence that's in our school system, not only through firearms, not only through bullying, but also through altercations. And um, for those of us who are in the Largo, Maryland area, last Friday there was an altercation at Largo High School between a student and a teacher. I did my little research, and upon researching on WUSA 9 as well as CBS Baltimore, I found out a little history about the story. So basically, this is what happened. The parent, the student, I'm sorry, the teacher called the parents of the student the, de the night before. The next day, the students were taking a Spanish test. Um, upon taking this Spanish test, the student, who is the, is the student of the parent that the teacher called, walked up to the teacher's desk to inquire about her grades. Fortunately, or not so much fortunately, but she was upset that her parents had gotten a phone call. I've been in that state. My parents have gotten mm -hmm. a phone call or two or three or four from some of my teachers. And upon getting that, you don't want to hear that. You don't want to deal with that. But I didn't choose to handle it in a manner that she did. She approached her teacher and said to her teacher, I want to talk to you about my grades. Mind you, they were having a Spanish test. And so upon doing that, the teacher told her to please step, step aside, step away. I'll deal with that momentarily or just step aside, step away. Please step aside. The student did not. The next thing I know, the student nudged um, the, the teacher, but before she did that, she stepped on her toes. Oh. Stepped on the teacher's toes, oh. then nudged her, and then the fight broke out. Now, some people are at a crossroads. Some people are on the side of the teacher. Some people are saying, you know, I can understand getting to that breaking point. The teacher had even admitted that she had had other situations that had gone on in the school. Um, she admitted to some of her friends that she had been threatened at school. So we don't know the breaking point for a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a parent. Um, so I don't know, but I know that I've gotten to moments in my life where I've had a breaking point right. and I've acted uncharacteristically. Right. Some of people are on the side of the student. The teacher shouldn't have acted that way. She's a professional. She should know better. Boom, boom, boom. They don't want to hear about the breaking point. They don't want to even embrace the people who even teachers can have a breaking point. Right. So today on our show, I've gathered two friends of mine. To my left, she's a return guest. <laughs> she's been here before. This is Miss Annie Pascal. The last time she was here, she was talking about her bout with breast cancer. Um, that was a very successful show, and I want to thank her for that. But um, when upon talking to her a couple of days ago, um, frantically, like I did last time, <laughs> she agreed to come, and she's going to speak on behalf of, of the parents and the grandparents out there who may feel a certain way about this situation as well as other situations that are happening in our school systems across America. 
to the left of her is my other friend, Miss Sherry Wingate. Now, Sherry Wingate is the professional side of this conversation, and I'm going to just play the question person because <laughs> I've got a couple of questions from some teachers as well. But Miss Sherry Wingate is, has been in the school system for 35 years. She is, for 12 years, she was a teacher, and for the rest of that 12, what, 25, 25 years, years? She was a school counselor, and so we're going to get some professionalism tied into this conversation. Um, I hope you guys continue to tune in, watch the whole show, and hopefully you can glean some some of the things that's going to come out of the show today. So having said all that, had to read some of my notes, had to get myself <laughs> centered to make sure that I had everything that I was going to say right on my sheet of paper behind this. We're going to pray and get started. And so if you have any questions, please post them. If you have any questions, you can call into the show. Like I stated, the number is 301-429-WBGR. We're going to center ourselves in and we're going to pray and get started. And I believe, God, that before the show is over, you're going to be even more enriched, enlightened, and prayerfully want to pray more harder for our schools, for our students, for our teachers, Amen. and everybody that's centered all around that. Having yes. said that, we're going to pray. Father God, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, God, and we just thank you for this topic. We thank you for the panel. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that's going to come out of it. Holy Spirit, have your way. Rest, rule, and abide. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 One of the things that I failed to, to mention is that that teacher has been, I believe, charged with um, physical child abuse, as well as she has been charged with second-degree murder. Now, I'm sorry, second-degree assault. Degree assault. Oh, now, I don't know if she's fully, fully charged yet, but at the time, she was supposed to have been charged. Mm -hmm. And they're still thinking about whether or not they're going to charge the student. And so, panel. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I did reach out to several people, but in respect to the union, teachers union, and things of that nature, a lot of some of the people emailed me back like I can't come on, but know that a lot of people were willing to come, and know that a lot of people mm -hmm. are um, upset about this whole situation because. We all want to know the whys, we want to know the whens, the particulars, and things of that nature. And so, on my panel, I'm going to hear from both of you ladies about, you know, this situation as well as other things happening in our schools. And so, because we've laid the foundation of our discussion today, I want to hear first from the parent, and then I want to hear from the professional. Um, first of all, what are your opinions about this whole incident that occurred, Ms. Amy? Um, I actually was just very shocked that uh, the situation blew up as badly as it did mm -hmm. because um, uh, I, I couldn't imagine, right. you know, my child, first of all, even speaking back to a teacher who was in control, an adult who was in control Absolutely. of the situation because yeah. I certainly believe that there's a time and a place and if the instructor or teacher was speaking, mm -hmm. and even if you disagreed, then you could have asked or waited and had a conversation mm -hmm. later on when yes. everyone was calm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So absolutely, that's that's where I am. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm a firm believer that you keep your hands to yourself mm -hmm. because a, mm -hmm. adult or not, you don't mm -hmm. know how somebody's going to react. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because I know if someone hit me, I might not want to hit them back, but you might. Mm -hmm. I might hit them back. You're right. And from the professional standpoint, um, you know, growing up, I could never imagine not obeying authority. Because right. that's what it comes down to. That's Not right. being an authority. I mean, you've got people who, you know, we, we, we all say our different mm -hmm. things, but I just couldn't imagine going to my teacher and if she says, you know, go back to your seat, me not doing that. Right. You know, because exactly. not so much because of me fearing the authority in front of me. I feared the folks back at home. Right. Because <laughs> my exactly. parents didn't play. Right. You know, and right. so from um, Miss Wingate, how do you feel about the altercation that happened last Friday? I'm appalled by it. Mm hmm However, I know that things happen. Right. I haven't um, encountered anything like that in my experience. Right. However, I do know that students get emotional. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't know what has happened before they even arrive at school. Mm -hmm. Some of them have illnesses, mm -hmm. illnesses that have been diagnosed right, and right. have not been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the school system is aware of these issues mm -hmm. sometimes they're not mm -hmm. and so therefore when you're working with a student you never know what 
may happen. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, you know, the teacher and that student, they know each other. They've been working with the, with each right. other. So right. I don't know all the details about right. that. But as a counselor, I've oftentimes met with students and teachers mm. that were having a conflict. Right. And sometimes we try to iron out whatever it was because they never really sat down and talked. Wow. Wow. And so let me ask you a question. So when it's a um, more mental mm -hmm. situation with the student, how is that handled? Because sometimes it's more excused. Mm -hmm. As right, opposed to your children or students that aren't is. dealing with nor with mental issues. Definitely. So how is that different? Well, we refer students to different resources. Okay. And so therefore, sometimes it's something that we can work with in-house. Right. And we try to do that right. to support whatever's going on outside Right. as well. So sometimes they're receiving um, services okay. outside and then they receive services within the school. Okay. And then we we have meetings with the teacher okay. to let them know that this particular student has these this this and this. And so we need to work with them and we develop a plan. Oh, uh, okay. As to how okay. are we going to work with this particular child that okay. has this going on? And then there are other times that you have no clue that mm -hmm. anything is going on and right. something just pops off just like that. Well, let me ask you and a question. As, being in the school system for several years, mm -hmm. um, now I've heard stories because I have family members that are in the school system as well. And so, you know, I get to hear some of the ins. Right. Um, working in other professions, I've heard some of the outs from, right. from non-professionals. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. What are some of the ways that the school system has changed in the 25 years that you've been a, a, a professional mm -hmm. or an educator? Ooh, it's changed many ways. Right. One, parent support has changed. I want to get on that. <laughs> I want to get you know, on that. I mean, when we were in school, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. whatever your parents said, mm -hmm. that was the way it was. Mm -hmm. However, there are times that that student is telling the truth. Right. And they go home and say that this particular person said this or did this to mm -hmm. me, and it just needs to be addressed. Right, right, But right. there's a way to address it. Right. It's not that you go up to the school and curse everybody out mm -hmm. or turn the main office out and mm -hmm. all of that. There is <laughs> a way to handle everything. Yeah. Amen, so, amen. That's one thing that has changed. Mm -hmm. Another thing. So, is what are you saying that's changed? You're saying that parent support has changed. Okay, for the teacher or the student, both. Ah. Oh. At one time, is what it was. Whatever the teacher said. That's you know, the era I grew school, up in. That's how it was. I'm whatever telling you, if my said, teacher told my mother I jumped off the right. building, she believed that exactly. teacher. Exactly. And I'm like, well, right. I should have broken bones, you know. But, but we do, on the other hand, have teachers, mm -hmm. lots of parents, right. that do come to the school and they communicate because Good. communication is key. That is mm -hmm. the key to mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. for any child in mm -hmm. school is open communication. Mm -hmm. If you have a question about something or something doesn't sit right with you, your child comes home and says, this teacher said this rude thing to me or I'm really upset about it, mm -hmm. then okay, you suppose, you should listen. Yeah. But then you, you check out the whole story. Right. Because I have come to bat for many students mm -hmm. over the years. Wow. And find out when you get the whole story, right. it is not quite what you thought it was. It was right. just a little piece mm -hmm. that it was, was left, out. Mm -hmm. left out of that mm -hmm. story. And you know what? Mm -hmm. As a parent, mm -hmm. you know, whenever mm -hmm. I have those situations with uh, teachers, my question was always, well, what did you do? Oh, yeah, my mom that asked me that too. happened? Mm -hmm. Because if you were supposed to have been quiet, mm -hmm. and like once my son was kept after school, so I'm waiting on him because we're supposed to be going someplace, but right. he has to stay after school because he right. would not keep his mouth closed. Mm -hmm. And so she made her point by keeping him there. Mm. And, and she had every right mm -hmm. to do that. So in addition to being disciplined there, he ended up being punished. Mm -hmm. you know, for a week. At so, home. exactly. Right, Because right. when the instructor tells you to do something, that's all you have to do. And if it's not right mm -hmm. that the, that the mm -hmm. instructor tells you something that doesn't fit right with mm -hmm. you or calls you out of your name, because mm -hmm. they have bad days, that's too. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I'm the adult. Absolutely. You bring it home to me right. and let me handle Absolutely. the adult. Right. Absolutely. And that's where... I think a lot of these things differ because, right. you know, a lot of children nowadays, they're allowed to say whatever mm -hmm. to their parents because mm -hmm. they have younger parents. Right. 
you right. know, and yeah. uh, they're they're more their friends, I think, mm. than actually the disciplinarian so, parent. So what you're what you're saying is that some parents aren't parenting. They're more so, and or their parenting style right. is this this uh, to make my child my friend. Right. I've seen that over the years. I've 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 seen. Definitely. You know, that dynamic happened, you know, and back in the day, I, I don't think I ever asked my mom to be her friend because I didn't want to be her friend. <laughs> I didn't want to be her you friend. Better. <laughs> you yeah. better, right. I want her to just be mom, exactly. you know, and um, yeah, that has happened um, through the years, through the decades that um, you're seeing that more where there's a cohesiveness, a friend-like cohesiveness exactly. between parent and child. Exactly. Why do you oh, feel yeah. that is? Well, I know, I mean, I've had parents to come in and tell me um, not to tell their child that they were there. Like, okay. don't tell my son that I came to the school. Okay. Because he doesn't want me to come. Okay. And so that's uh, different. Okay. That, so that's I mean, one I, way that things I mean, have changed. He doesn't want me. And I know that some children, you know, I, 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 I didn't you know, want you my mom cool coming either because I didn't want to be there. But I didn't school. have the nerve to tell her that. <laughs> oh, well, right. I would have been picking but, my lips or yeah, something. <laughs> exactly. Room. They don't want the, their friends to see their parents, so they right. tell them to park way, park down there wow. so that, you know, nobody. Mm, just goes but to show you how When you're an adult and the parent, they should not. Mm hmm. Listen to that. Or right. why would your child feel that they can even say that? Right. Why do you feel like right. you have to but be your child's But on the other friend? hand, we right. do have lots and lots. There are many, many parents that are trying their very best. Mm -hmm. And they come to the school. Mm -hmm. And the key, like mm -hmm. I said, is that communication and building that rapport from the beginning. Right. You can't not wait until May. Right. You never met that teacher. Wow. If you walk in the community or you happen to be out somewhere and you see your child talking to some stranger, you want to know who, who is that, that person you're who talking is that? to. Who is so that? in the same way, you should want to know who are you with all day? Mm. Who are all these people? Mm -hmm. So do you, do, you, do you feel that some parents are apprehensive oh, to yes. go through the list and ask these daily questions with their they kids? Are, because there are parents that have had bad experiences in school themselves. Oh, okay. And there's some okay. parents that are in, truly intimidated by the school system. But they with don't the homework load the or homework? what? No, it's just they don't feel that they know what questions to ask. They don't know who to see all the time. Mm -hmm. And they just feel somewhat intimidated. Because when you attend mm, a meeting, wow. sometimes you're sitting at a table with five or six teachers. Mm. And you come in as, as a parent. Right, right. And oftentimes that conference may or may not go the way it should. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to hear a bunch of negatives about your child, about your child, mm -hmm. how do you feel when you get up and walk out of that room? Well, you take it personal. I would exactly. assume. Exactly. Right. You take it personal. Exactly. So that's and then why. You, and you then know, you may even yes. think about your lack of education. Exactly. You know, and the fact that that's you right. may not be able to help your child with the right. calculus homework or exactly. the algebra right. homework. You know, that's because right. education has changed so much. You know, that's and exactly right. I know if I if I had a kid, I couldn't help you with your trigonometry. Exactly. First of all, thank God you at the trigonometry level. <laughs> right, right. No, mommy didn't did that. Right. But I would not be equipped to help. Like that, and then some people just can't afford the tutor. It some is. people just can't afford all that. Or you don't know the, the language. Right. You know, oh, okay. You don't know the language all okay. the time. They're, that's true. They're using this language at the table, that's and you're true. not familiar with it. So that's why, you know, as a counselor, I always talk with parents and students and, mm -hmm. and the teachers to help ahead of time with let's make sure this parent is comfortable. Wow. Let's make sure that's, that that's important. we are using that's important. language that they can understand. That's important. Or if we need to break something down, let's break it down so that they can understand so we right. can get help for their child and they feel when they walk out that they are trying to help my child. Exactly. Wow. Now Not, that's a good tool. Exactly. You know, I don't know Definitely. if a lot of people or a lot mm -hmm. of schools implement that. I think it mm -hmm. would be very resourceful for parents because yes. if they feel a sense of comfort Definitely. from right. that school, mm -hmm. right. that does feel feed into the cohesiveness Definitely. of parent, student, right, teacher, exactly, you right. know, principal. We're all working this together because exactly. we want what? The best for the child. And that's where the school climate comes in. Right. Mm. Because the climate needs to be wow. conducive okay. to learning okay. in the first place and welcoming so that right. people that walk in the door mm -hmm. feel welcome in the school. I like that. I like that. So, Miss Annie, yeah. were, how, how instrumental were you and your son's 
um, education and did you have to go to the because you raised boys right right did you have to go to the school a lot went to the school and to their bodies okay? <laughs> 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 she said bodies for those who did not hear. <laughs> she uh, believed in sparing the rod, spoiling the child. She she did not spare the rod. <laughs> That's right. But all joking aside, you know. Um, wink, wink. <laughs> you no, know, I I think I only really had uh, uh, problems once, and that was with my uh, older son. Mm -hmm and uh, uh, a group of people that he decided to hang with. Right. And one of the things I'd always told my children is you, uh, I'm not raising you to be out here in the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you do anything wrong, contrary to what's being taught in this house, I'm going to let you stay in jail. Wow. And my son, mm -hmm. of course he didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was going through my divorce, the court let him choose who he wanted to live with, so he selected his dad. Okay. And okay. so he ended up being in trouble, and God fixed that thing so Amen. that nobody was at home. <laughs> me. So I, I get up, and of course I go over to the uh, jail. I mean, not jail, but to the police station. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm talking to him, and he's like, all bluffing and stuff so they had a little hole about this big you know where you could hear and the holes inside the thing so I was trying to squeeze my body like through here to choke him <laughs> I was just furious with yeah, him yeah. you know and he knew it and Definitely. so this is what I said to him oh you want to talk trash okay you gonna stay in here so I uh -huh. came out and so the the officer said, well, ma'am, all you have to do is sign his paper. I said, I'm not signing nothing. Mm -hmm. He can stay right in here wow. until he pull his life together. Wow. And so they ended up taking Tough him because I never would Tough answer life. the um, mm -hmm. police officer because he was so big mm -hmm. and had hair all on his face. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe he was 16, so mm -hmm. they had taken and segregated him, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> from the adults. And he's screaming <laughs> over there like, you know. <laughs> But after I left him in there mm -hmm. for about a week mm -hmm. out in a PG, mm -hmm. I bet you that uh, mm -hmm. he mumbled down. I okay? bet he did. And that was a whole year of his life mm -hmm. that he had to uh, run back and forth to court. Wow. So on the day he was supposed to graduate, he was due to go back to court that day. So he says, I'm not going. I was like, that's okay. You ain't got to go. I'm going to go myself. And I'm, when they ask me where you at, I'm going to let them know mm -hmm. so they could come right over there and take walk you right off the stage <laughs> in front of your whole class. Oh, my God. He was just so through. But I, I tell you, he never mm -hmm. did anything mm -hmm. again. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he was, he was mm -hmm. telling all his friends, my mother's crazy. Mm -hmm. My mother's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that those um, mm -hmm. lessons like that and the tough love that you mentioned is very important. Do you feel now that in this climate, in this society, um, some parents are afraid to give that kind of tough love? Yeah, definitely, because there's so many factors that go along with that. Okay, you like know, what? Like, if you leave your child now, you don't know what might happen to them while you leave them there. Oh, wow. With the brutality and things that are happening. Wow. You there's another side in of the that. juvenile system. Yeah. Right. I mean, anyway, you just don't know that. down days. I didn't you know think about now. that. I mean, that's a personal decision, right, for each family. But so you have to determine you what tough to means. That. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to determine right. what tough means and you make do. that conscious decision, not to because the dynamics of life period exactly. has changed. It's, it's you know, changed. the level of protection has changed. Exactly. You know, exactly. before back in the day, you might have been able to let your nine-year-old go into the men's room, use the bathroom, exactly. and come out and you nobody touch it. him. Yeah. But yeah. now you, you have now. to think about, you coming in a female's bathroom right. with exactly. mommy, and right. I, I mean, nobody's looking at you, because exactly. you have to protect your child beyond exactly. the ways exactly. we used to back in the day, because exactly. life has changed. Right. And that falls right in the line with your question about how Education has changed mm -hmm. right. over the years. Right. That's one way that has changed. Wow. That anybody may be able to go in the bathroom. You said anybody, anybody what? may be, be able to use. Wow. Like, wow. Bathroom. Right. 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 So that that's a that's way another that has thing. changed. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I didn't even think about that. Technology has changed. Yeah. There's more access. Right. Now. Right. So there's many ways that that education has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. Now, data. 
everything is data driven. That's right. true. That's true. You know, whether it be right or wrong, right. it's still data driven. So you can access, you can look at your child's grades now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you don't have to wait for report cards. We had to wait, <laughs> wait for report cards right. to come mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that anymore. You can mm-hmm. look every day. So has that helped us or harmed us? I think it has helped. Okay. Okay. The, that the technology part. The yes. technology that part. part without the social media part. Okay. Right. So right. so yeah. in what ways have it has it harmed either teaching styles or parenting styles? Well. Or the interaction with parent to student to, ch- to teacher? Well, for the most part, I think it has helped because the teacher Good. now can, you know, put that information out there knowing that parents have access to it, that they can look, that I don't have to call you to say, mm. right. but you have access. That's true. That's true. That's true. You have access now. So now when you see that your child's grade has fallen, mm-hmm. that alerts you. You can call that teacher. Right. Or email that teacher. Mm-hmm. Or when your kid comes and says, I oh, got all A's, you're like, oh, you did? Right. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Right. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me show See, you The that. point is yeah. this. <laughs> you got all C's. And sometimes, you know, that's not the most accurate, <laughs> what they're looking at. Okay. It's not right. because there's a pile of papers on that teacher's desk that have not been graded. Oh, okay. So they have to consider that. But you look, mm-hmm. at least it's giving you some right. awareness as to where right. your child, right. you know Damn your child right. best. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're so, hopefully seeing some of their study habits if they're studying at all. Exactly. You know? Right. I have a question for you ladies. Okay, so 52 years ago, the Supreme Court, in regards to government-endorsed organizations, removed prayer from schools. I know you and I have talked about this right. once or twice. Um that was their ruling over 52 years oh, 52 years ago right. governing the way that things are today how do you ladies feel about that somebody should prayer go back in school black. well we Pray. see what has happened since it's been taken out absolutely that, that's one thing and i always say if you teach your child to pray at home as well exactly mm. if your child's mm. prayed up before they get to school even if the school says no Teach your child at home. Now, right. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that because no, you you're not putting the onus on the school. school. You can right. pray in the car, pray yeah. in the parking lot. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So even though the school says no, yeah. if you're doing that part, yeah. your child's covered. Now, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. What do you, what do you say, Miss Annie? Well, you know, I have a grandson now, and Cameron mm-hmm. prays. He's mm-hmm. been taught to yeah. pray. Yeah. So, you know, and when he visits at home, I ask him about, you know, school mm-hmm. and who his friends are mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, we discuss that. And mm-hmm. it's extremely important it is. that prayer mm-hmm. stay in, you know, and people that haven't, that, that don't go to church or don't know God, because mm-hmm. you can go to church and still mm-hmm. not know God. Yeah, mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But those people that don't know God, they will never understand the importance of how they can keep their child safe by prayer. You Amen. don't ever have Amen. to be Amen. there right. because right. God will cover you. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, too, that I want to add is in um, my former church, well, even my church now, we have a Christian school. Right. But I remember having a conversation with a mom who, um, not in my former church because you had to be a member, mm-hmm. but where we are now, thank God, it really didn't necessarily have to be a member to right. send your child to a Christian school. Right. But this wasn't a parent that was going to either, whose child was in either of those schools. Her child was in another Christian school. Mm-hmm. And one of the things she was sharing with me was how in, her child came home and shared the Bible with her. Okay. Yeah. And so now child is teaching mom. Right. You know, and dad, you know, because they made a decision to send them to this Christian school Mm -hmm. to give them the tools that they probably weren't giving at home or not as much. Right. Mm -hmm. And this child was coming home singing the praises of Christ and teaching them some Bible verses, you know. And so it's it's a domino effect. Definitely. You know, and And it affects everybody. She said your kid would be in the backseat just singing, singing, singing. And they're like, What do you say? And then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing. So after a while, right. mommy's humming that tune while she's going exactly. to work it too, right. and then feeling the love of Christ. And so I don't think that people understand how much of a domino effect, you know, that, prayer that in is. school right. is, you exactly. know, and how how different it is for that child to have a source by which oh. they can call upon when you're right. not there. That's right. Because right. you're you know? not always going to be there. No, and that and, 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 and that's and teaching the rest them that. Of the second. This next second isn't promised to any of us. Right. So you're absolutely right. 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 You yeah. Know? 
Yeah. I had a question, and I think we covered it before, about authority. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you see um, a strong level of authority in regards to respect from with students to teachers nowadays it varies okay. there are a lot of good great students mm-hmm. that are respectful they come to school they do their work they do their homework they study they do what you ask them to do mm-hmm. there are lots of kids and i and as a matter of fact i believe that there are more kids that are doing the right thing good. Right, than right. that they're yeah. not that's good they that's really good are there are a lot of good kids and great parents. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. I believe the that. Few, I believe as that. in anything else. Yeah, that gets everybody's attention. Because mm-hmm. you can have. I mean, mm-hmm. at, before I retired, I had five hundred students. Right. That year. It's overwhelming. Five hundred students, but you can have ten. Wow. That gets everybody's attention. It wow. soaks up all of your time. Oh right. yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I mean, if you get. I mean, students that have their um, oppositional defiant behaviors mm. oh my God. with no matter mm. what you say. Now, what is that? Tell, uh, let's, let's explain all that to the audience. What is that? Oppositional defiant is basically, it's, it's no matter what you say, the student is going to do what they choose to do. And they, oh. it's, it's a real oh, okay. problem that they have. Mm-hmm. It's diagnosed. Right. It's not something that you're just saying, he just won't listen. Right. It's a diagnosed okay. Okay. issue. And so that student, if you say so sit there, psychological trait. they're going to, they may walk out the door. Wow. Mm-hmm. So if you have two or three of those in your class. Mm-hmm. Right. Plus you so have so wouldn't that thing. student oh, need be yes. labeled uh-huh. with special needs? Yes. Okay, so they would and be they in the regular classroom. Yes, they yes. would. Really? They yes. would still be there? They would yes. be in the regular classroom. That's Why? Like, you cannot, it's total inclusion. You cannot gotcha. separate these students wow. like that. So they have to... They have plans to address their needs. Right. Their parents have taken them to the doctor because they've been diagnosed. Right. right. And then that you get to the table and you talk about the needs of that particular child. Wow. And what, what are their triggers? And now let me ask you a question. Now, does the decision to remain inclusive, have these students remain inclusive, is that something that comes down from the school board or is that something that it's comes a, down from the law. parents? So it's a mm-hmm. law. Okay. So what if the parent opposes that? Well, you get back to the table. It's always that communication is always mm-hmm. okay. key. Okay. So okay. sometimes they do oppose different programs or whatever is suggested. So you get to the table and you discuss it. And there are times that you just may have to have uh, legal advice. The parent may bring legal. Got you. Okay. You okay. Know, they may bring a lawyer with them or advocate with them mm-hmm. to, to the table to help them because sometimes they don't even know what to, to ask. Wow. And how to do this. So there are various ways, but and you know, there are avenues to get help mm-hmm. for this so that this child can function because sometimes they're just not taking their medication. Right. Mm. And mm-hmm. so they're they're off for two mm-hmm. days, but mm-hmm. they're brilliant students and they can perform and they're on honor roll. Wow. Mm-hmm. They can be. So it's a mental imbalance going sometimes, on. Sometimes. Yeah. You interact, yeah. Miss Miss Pascal, you interact with um children at least once or twice a week you're right. you're um and they're not a daycare provider but you you're interacting with you little kids that you're watching over how do you see when you see these um, parents come to um the facility that you, you you do this in how are some of the parents are they are they at at this young age that they're bringing their kid you know how is the interaction between that are they giving in more are they being more stern are they enforcing the level of authority what do you see when you when you see this i think for me i have a little bit more of the grandparents bringing the children oh. because oh, okay. you know they're working okay you know, I who's mean, working the parents correct got gotcha. you and i mean the parents that do uh that I deal with on a regular, I, I will say that they are definitely into, you know, making sure that their children have things. It's very few, um, I, I, I'm a strong believer that when you have your kids, if you're bringing your kids to church, 
than they're being taught that at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so like, if I say to one of the children, you know what, when your mother gets here and your dad gets here, <laughs> I'm, then it's a whole different thing. <laughs> you can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. And so you know right. that at What's home, mm -hmm. right, that, that mm -hmm. the parents are definitely, you know, doing what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And and I know mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they, they don't uh, uh, go to church or whatever, but I, I truly believe that, you know, you... There's no, of course you can raise your child without church, okay? Definitely. But I think that a super life and less problems where they learn earlier on to cope with issues, mm -hmm. you know, even if the, the issues are really tragic, mm -hmm. I believe that if you have God in your life, Amen. it'll help them to make Absolutely. that adjustment Absolutely. very different mm -hmm. from a Definitely. child that Absolutely. is not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um... You know, we just, for me, mm -hmm. I, I always pray mm -hmm. for the children. Mm -hmm. Like, I know the law tells me uh, I'm not supposed to be doing this, mm -hmm. but I, I do Your it. Your God not, says, yeah. Right. Your right. God says, yeah. But I, I definitely uh, pray, you know, uh, for those kids because mm -hmm. you never know what they're going home to. You're right. Mm -hmm. you, you just don't know. Dude, yeah, I mean, I, you have you have kids right. who are still going home and eating nothing until the next day. Correct. Exactly. You have kids, and, and you're expected to get A's. I mean, mm -hmm. how can you? You're right. hungry. Um, psychologically, it does not work for you. Right. You know, how can you... Um, focus on learning exactly. when you're hungry. Exactly. I used to be a chairperson of a homeless ministry and one of the things that we had to learn was first feed their bodies. Right. right. Then, then feed their heart right. and their soul. Exactly. Because they're not going to pay attention to you. You can if you're you can hungry. if your stomach's ground. Absolutely. And so I was reading how I believe um, D.C., and I could be wrong, but um, some school systems now are packaging up right. food yes. so that the kids oh, yeah. can take it yes. home for the weekend. Oh, exactly. yeah. We you know, not just the night before, that. but the yeah. weekend. Yeah. Yes. We you know, something like that. I think that's school. a great idea because yeah. I, I just think that community plays a strong role. Oh, exactly. exactly. It's, it's Definitely. a part of the flow. You know, Definitely. it's a part of the flow. Um, Definitely. It takes a village to, Definitely it takes does. a village. And I'm going to tell you, that African Definitely. proverb is so true because I remember growing up in South Carolina how sometimes my grandma would have to watch me after school or right. an auntie or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's difficult. I, my heart goes out to single moms. My mm -hmm. heart goes out to single dads because it's very difficult for Definitely. you to hold down the house. Yeah. Right. Raise your child, Definitely. have a social life if you have exactly. that at all. Exactly. You know, so hats off to those who are doing it. Definitely. And it's just you. You yeah. know, I can't even imagine, you know, the struggles that you go through. And then to have to get off your job, right. come to the school and it's have a, a conversation. It is. It's a lot for, for parents. It is. And it's a lot for the teachers, too. Yeah, because teachers have the teachers families. families. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's so easy for people to sometimes mm -hmm. think. That, mm -hmm. you know, I've had people call and say, um, I can get there, but I can't get there until about 630. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, and if you want to have that conversation. The teacher's gone at 630. So what happens in that case? You She doesn't have the conversation or she the teacher stays? She has the conversation. I said, well, we can do a telephone conference. Okay, okay. You okay. know, if you can't get here or whatever, right. what else can we do? We can yes. come. You can come early in the morning when yes. the teacher is here. Yes. You know, there are other ways. Okay. There are avenues okay. of communication. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean. It never means that you can't communicate. Right. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes we take for granted the that the teacher has her own lifestyle, too. Oh, you know, I mean, I, I work in a hair salon, and I have a teacher, a, a client who's a teacher. Mm -hmm. And every school year, she's bouncing in. Hi, Miss Deidre. Yeah. And she's bringing her, her coursework, yeah, right. her schoolwork. And you she's working to. on a PhD. You have to. And so she's tossed between, should I study for higher education or well, should I grade these papers? papers you right. know, and, you know, it's always a toss up. That's she gets sure, it done. Right. But, you know, sometimes she's coming at 630. Exactly. And so she still have to put in three hours more work. Exactly. Yes. You exactly. know, in addition to having a life herself. Definitely. You know, I think sometimes we forget. Definitely. So when this situation happened, I did watch a couple of news stations. I believe Fox 5 was one right. of them. And there was a school board conversation about it. And I was um, surprised to see and happy one of the parents who said, you know, she lost her job. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This educator. Right. She was tossed in jail and stayed for the weekend. Right. Exactly. You know, what about her rights? And I was just so blessed by that. Exactly. Because 
she was like, who's going to stand up and speak for her? Right. S the student stepped on her toe right. and then nudged her. Right. You know, and so at what point do you not retaliate? And mm -hmm. so I was glad to know that everybody was just not on the side of the student exactly. and saying, well, you know, the teacher is a professional. The teacher is human. Exactly. Just like that student. That's right. And it's a difficult and thing. We still it is a difficult know, thing. And it's we difficult. still don't know how long that's been going on. We don't. And we don't. whether yeah, or don't not we the don't. parent yes. even came up there to have a conversation right. we or don't. was even interested to right. come to have a conversation. Yes. And for me, I, I couldn't even imagine my child not running away from home if he knew he had done some stuff like that. Well, that's that. why I'm saying I can't sit on the investigation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. It is. I'm just it saying, is. you yeah, know, all the it's details. It's a case. And, yeah, right. they have right. to find out everything you know, that, mm -hmm. that took place. But that's, but that's why totally she have to be, why should, uh, as the adult, I as understand the adult, what right. they say, so but... Do it. Well, they are still looking at whether they should charge a student too, and That's so to me, should. to me, that in and itself has changed a lot. Oh, mm -hmm. definitely. Because it, it, they're not okay. now just looking at the teacher maintaining a level of standard. Exactly. They're now saying, "Wait a minute, you need to obey authority, and you touched someone, you assaulted someone too." Yeah. In this case, the there was too. retaliation, and right. this isn't the first case. I was, I was, oh, I no, saw a case happens. last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this happens nationwide. Happens, yeah. You know, these teachers now are like, that, you just happen to see that. Yeah, you just <laughs> happen to see that, right, 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 right. right. You have a chance. Absolutely, to see yes. And, you know, and. I That's mean, it. I'm no disrespect to the teenagers, but some of these teenagers are just as big or bigger oh, than definitely. some of the teachers that are out there. Right. You know, no, um, I just, I just back in my day, I just, it just had a challenge. different level of respect for it teachers. Is. It's a to the point I couldn't, you know, I hated them calling home. I had it, and Lord yeah. God forbid, when I was little, I hated taking that note home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to take it out of my backpack so right. bad. But we just had a reverence for our parents that we did. sometimes we don't have today, or students don't have. Today. We had a reverence for our teachers that's not being implemented today. And why do you I guys think feel? I think that that well, in my experience, many of the students are angry. Oh, let's talk about that. Why they are they angry? Are angry. And you're a counselor, so you would see that. Yes. Why are they angry? I've seen this anger for many, many reasons. I mean, I've just seen a child just crying and crying because a, a boy just tapped her. I watched him tap mm -hmm. her from a distance. Mm -hmm. And then she was crying like he was killing her. Mm -hmm. So once I got her in my office. There's something else behind that. I said, what are you really crying about? Because I saw, I saw him hit you, which mm -hmm. was wrong. Mm -hmm. However, she said, I just want my father to send me a birthday card. <laughs> oh. These kids wow. are angry. They're angry about oh their lives. God. Yeah. Many yeah. of them are angry about their lives and and wow. they're things that they have no control over because they're supposed to be kids. Right. But they have the responsibility of many adults. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's and, true. And and right. it is not their fault that that's they are true. so angry. That's true. You know? Do you do you think that um sometimes parents tend to overshare? And I say that oh, because... Oh, with the child? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. man is being friends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that goes back. That goes back to that. you know, you're the man of the house. Right. Because, you know... You're the man of the house. You're the right. only male in the house. Right. So, oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, kids, they know everything. They know So do you think that that contributes business. to the anger? Oh, definitely. Because if you tell your child all of your personal, what their dad's mm -hmm. doing, and what mom's something. not doing... Mm -hmm. And you have this whole conversation with a child, they can't handle that. No, they can't. No, they can't. They, they act like they can, and some no, of can't. them appear Try to be a little to. more mature, right. mm -hmm. but they're internalizing right. it. And, and, they can't and, and it's it. a, it's a, I, no it's fault so to, sad. no fault to mm -hmm. the parent at all because they're venting. And sometimes they need somebody to talk to, yeah. so they talk to their child. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and sometimes they're doing that because they have exasperated all their resources yeah. and the and friends don't want to hear the and other side anymore and they're frustrated, they're very I, mean, frustrated. I was going to say too and you know what there are just so many free resources yes. as far as mental mm -hmm. health uh, mm -hmm. goes and mm -hmm. one of the things that mm -hmm. I found in speaking I'll never forget this uh, I have a friend that she laughed at me when I had uh, experienced uh, a really deep problem mm -hmm. and and it almost ran me crazy mm -hmm. so I, I went to seek someone 
and 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 got help. And I probably did for maybe about, let's say, about that's great. six that's months. That's great that you did that. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing was that she teased me about it, right? Mm-hmm. And then she ended up having something that happened to her. Mm. Wow. And she's still seeing Mm -hmm. someone. But I never teased her, you know, about it. I never threw Mm -hmm. that back up in her face because one thing was at least she went and sought help. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm sure she probably never even thought about, Mm -hmm. you know, what she had said to me and how yeah. it had affected me at the right, time, right, right. you know, but it, it I, I was strong enough, right. you know, to bypass her. My thing mm. was, I don't care what she think, I'm going to go and, because I know mm-hmm. I'm not right. Oh, yeah. Right? You know? yeah. And I think that, um, thank you for sharing that. I don't, I don't think that a lot of times we are cognizant of the fact that there are free resources out there. You know, I know a lot of times by the time I get to the word free, I'm like, oh, there's something free out there because we have to pay for everything, you know? And that's why you have to seek Mm -hmm. the information. If you don't know, ask someone. Right. Ask at the school level anyway. Mm -hmm. And certainly Mm -hmm. in the counseling office, Mm -hmm. we had many resources. Mm to share with parents mm-hmm. and uh, and because oftentimes I refer the parent mm-hmm. not necessarily the child right but you can't help your child if right. you need help right exactly. I mean it's, exactly. it's life mm-hmm. is life is yeah. um, heartbreaking too. It is. It's it's just it is. So life has been so it's so much pressure it with is. life I mean yes. everyday life it's yes. just pressure it's it's Pressure when you're single. It's Ooh, pressure girl. when you're married. It it's is. Pressure when you're a parent. Yeah. Pressure, pressure when, when you're a single drink. parent. Yeah. Pressure it's when you drink. Drink. Pressure when you drink. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's true, though. Hard. I mean, it I've is. seen many families struggling exactly. and trying to get it exactly. right. Yeah. And they're trying hard. Yeah. But they have this obstacle and right. that obstacle. Right. And, and in, the, in the meantime, the child is suffering. Right. Now, let me ask it's you a question. How, mm-hmm. how... Does peer pressure play a role to that? I know oh, a lot of school major. systems now have the kids in school uniforms. Right. But, but even in a uniform, you want your own individuality. Yes. I know for me, I probably would have a necklace on and a bracelet. And they do. <laughs> and they do. Yeah, they in a purse. You know, yeah. and so how how does peer pressure play a role in all it that? Because does. I know that for sometimes with um, parents, single and not single parents, mm-hmm. you're running that race with trying to keep up with who? The, the Joneses, exactly, right? whoever they are, <laughs> you know, and who and, and who gave them the right to set this standard that everybody, a lot of right. people should live by. And so let's talk about peer pressure in school and it's peer different. pressure at home. Peer, you pressure, know? peer pressure is different today than it used to be yeah. because of technology. Right. Okay, okay. See, so now okay. Before, okay. we used to have... I, yeah. I can Verbal recall having spells. books yeah. that you would write. Yeah. What do you think of mm-hmm. Pam? Yeah. And you would write, I like Pam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now, you better like Pam. It's on <laughs> now it's yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. And it's on, I mean, and right. at any time. And it I doesn't stay at, at, do you like Pam? Oh, no. And I like Pam. Oh. By the time it by comes time back it around, back. I can't mm-hmm. stand Pam. Exactly. You know? And then on Monday morning, yeah. what has happened all over the weekend. Right. Now I have it in my office. Right. Wow. Okay. And I have six girls. Yes. That I know now this is getting ready to be two hours with whatever I had planned. Yeah. Right. This is another two yeah. hours because yeah. or the parent might walk in with the paper that this is what this is printed a print Jesus. out of this is what they're saying about my daughter. So And I'm gonna tell you something with that. That's and I know that this difference. is not on my paper, but I will say this. That has got to be looked upon too, because suicide rate for students is That's rising. High. Yes, and it it's because high. of things like that. Exactly. You know, Definitely. somebody coming in and it saying, is. you know, this was said about my exactly. child over the weekend, and thank God for those parents yes. who are interactive with their kids yes. to the point that they're like, wait a minute, baby, don't yes. listen to what this exactly. paper say about you. What does God say but about it's you? Hard what for these children, it's yeah. very difficult to come every day yes. and because, hear that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that suicide threat mm-hmm. rate is. Is real. Really yeah, it is. I know. I know. I'm on a given school year. I may have done four or five suicide threat assessments. Jesus. Mm-hmm. My last year, I did thirty-two. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thirty-two. I, I don't even My think people year. realize how on the rise yes. it is. It's, you know, it's real. It's so heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. It's so yes. heart wrenching, and yes, t- the coping skills are not the same. Right. 
you know. Are they and learning coping skills? You try and teach them coping skills, but it's it's so much coming at them all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because you can try this at school, but when you leave school and you go home, you're in a different environment. Yeah, it's not reinforced sometimes. It's different. And I yeah. guess my question uh, yeah. uh, too is, you know, like uh, growing up, I, I just didn't know people that didn't go to church. You know, mm -hmm. the, even mm -hmm. if the parents didn't yeah. go, the kids did. went to Sunday yeah, school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. went to Sunday school, you learned about God, mm -hmm. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all, that. all the stories, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's very different now, mm -hmm. you know, oh, because people don't feel like God is relevant yeah. in their lives. Oh, and yeah. I think that that plays a huge part. Yeah. And people don't want to talk about it. Absolutely. You know, and, and um, I'm so grateful for the daughter-in-law that I have that mm. keeps my grandson, mm -hmm. you know, where he comes to church and he goes to mm -hmm. church school and he's learning Amen. about Christ mm -hmm. because, Amen. you know, it makes all the difference. And mm -hmm. uh, a funny story, when uh, uh, Cameron was young, you know, she was like, you know, she didn't really believe in fighting my daughter-in-law and stuff. And I said to her, well, you know, if somebody was bothering you and Chris, you know, my son, didn't do anything, how would you feel about that? You mm -hmm. would expect him to pummel that person, to, mm -hmm. you know, to get them off of you and right, stuff. Right, right. So it gave her an, an, a different insight mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. when or where you should fight. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be like these, you know, not just kids, but there's bullies everywhere, mm -hmm. even in adults. I mm -hmm. know adults right now that right. bully people, right, right, you know. Right. And so, but... Um, Without the uh, you just have people to teach like these you the coping skills yeah. so that they learn yeah. the proper way to handle exactly. conflict. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like, because yeah. you cannot, you know, the fighting is not the fighting that it used to be. Right, right, right. right. The fighting is right. different now. Oh yeah. Right. So you can't assume that you're going to have an old-fashioned fist fight because mm -hmm. that ain't it's gonna not, be it. That's not be decades ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Or it's the level different. of forgiveness. Exactly. Correct. Quickly forgiving I someone. Yeah. yeah. I don't even and think, do they even know what that word what it means? means? Right. The level of forgiveness and moving on. Because, they do. They do. Because you, mm -hmm. you've got the kids who are holding a grudge. You've got the parents who are now holding a grudge with the kids. Mm -hmm. You know? And so it spirals down. But there and, are programs within the school. Mm-hmm. To help address that, good, right. so good. that these kids can come together mm -hmm. and address these problems, mm -hmm. the problems that they're having. If they're five kids, mm -hmm. they can come together in a room mm -hmm. like this and address that issue. Mm -hmm. That's not always the the appropriate thing to do for every case, right, right, right. 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 But for some cases, and then they talk, and mm -hmm. many times they've never talked to each other. Mm -hmm. It's all been hearsay. Mm -hmm. It's been what was on Instagram, right, or somewhere, and then they talk, and they were like. Oh, I never talked to her before. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a um, good thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, it is. I mean, if they have things called restorative justice. That is good. And, you know, well, peer mediation can be good sometimes, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are other avenues. Mm -hmm. Communication, communication is the key. I have a question from uh, my viewer. She wants to know, what does good parenting look like? Either one of you. Well, you're a parent. Yep. Right. So let's start oh, yeah. with you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, know, you know? I can't say because if it was left up to my kids, they'd probably say I was a bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing. That's a but, good thing. Um, I, that, that's really hard. I, uh, first and foremost, uh, for me, I, I, you have to keep God. I have to keep God. Mm hmm first amen and amen because that's who keeps me in check mm -hmm. right. Right. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because um you know as a parent sometimes your kids do really crazy stuff and then you let your anger take over and mm. then you have to turn around and go back and apologize right right, right. you know because you just went ballistic right you know and now they haven't listened to a darn thing that you've said amen but mm -hmm. if i take a moment and say, you know what? We're going to talk about this mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And and I'll let you know when I'm ready, mm -hmm. right? you know. And and I take the time to assess the situation. Then I can come back and get the details, and we can discuss mm -hmm. 
the situation mm -hmm. rather than for me to just like blow up and be mm -hmm. like ticked off about it. So mm -hmm. that's what works, you know, for me because I'm sure, um, you know, other people may have, you know, uh, other things that work for them. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And some of those things are learned behavior. And right. some of that is also maturity and growth, right? you know, because yeah. when you're having little kids, you know, you're not always thinking the way to solve this conflict resolution right. is to listen to what they're saying. You right. know, at that point, you could be at a boiling point where you're like, exactly. I'm going to tap right. that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's how we're handling this, right. you know, and so... There are various ways to combat a situation, mm -hmm. but it also deals with that parent's mental state. Exactly. And the issues of life that they have to deal with outside of home. Right. Exactly. And if they're a parent holding it down themselves, it's just them. That's right. it's Whoa, really it's escalated. Mm -hmm. It's escalated. And, and they may not have a, a support mm -hmm. system. What? I said you drink a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you said it because you did it. You're an That's awful. how it You're an awful. <laughs> well, I can say as a good parent, me not being a parent, but as an educator working with parents, mm -hmm. good parenting looks like meeting the teacher. Okay, okay. Going to okay. the school. Okay. Staying in communication, you may not have to take off your job every day. Right, right. But at least one time right. during the school year. Because right. if you put the face, you know, get to the table. Absolutely. And then keep the communication going via email, mm -hmm. telephone call, mm -hmm. whatever you need That's to right. do all right. the way through. And That's don't right. stop after elementary school. Oh, no, go on Because college. people tend to back off. Yeah. After elementary, it gets a little less. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going up to the school. He's a little older now. Mm -hmm. And then by high school, and like, oh, he's got it. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's got but it. He and then it. they tell you, I've got it. Yeah. I've got, I've got mm -hmm. this mom. No, they don't have No, it. you don't. And you they don't really it. have it. I mean, even your top students sometimes, Yes. you right. know, your students that get scholarships mm -hmm. and so forth, but they didn't fill out that scholarship oh. application. Mm -hmm. And you missed it. Wow. And it was $10,000. Wow. And you missed it. Wow. But you still have straight A's, mm. but you missed it. You, you know, when, I was, support. when wow. I was a student at Howard, um, mm -hmm. oh. HU, I mm -hmm. remember going into class one day and there was this father in the class. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whose daddy is this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> whose daddy is this? You know, and I didn't right. say anything except for, in my mind, I'm going, is he in the right place? Right. I was thinking he was a substitute at one point, and then the mm -hmm. professor walked in, and I was like, no, this is somebody's papa. And so That's he right. sat in the back, he sat through the class, exactly. he didn't say a thing. That's at right. the end of class, you know, I'm walking slow to the door because I'm a little nosy. You know? <laughs> And the nosy and daddy this was. <laughs> but as I got closer and then I went to the teacher, I was like, did you need me for anything? <laughs> I was nosy. But, my, but the father approached the desk. Mm -hmm. And as I was leaving out, I heard him, um, they, they shook hands. Right. And he said, I'm going to say Mr. Brown. I, that wasn't his name. And he said, how you doing? Nice to see you again, Mr. Brown. There you go. And he said, um... He said, meet, meet, meet Pamela. And I was happy to know that, you know, we were going to be introduced because right. I could hear more of the story. Right. But really it was gone. But this father had three sons, and they all had gone to Howard. Mm -hmm. right. And he made it his business once a year to sit in their classes. There you go. That's and he mean. had done it with his other students, and it so happened that two of his students had the same professor. And I just thought that was so beautiful but that he stayed. But those children expected their father to go because okay. he's been going. Okay, right. so okay. So they're not ones that saying, Mom, don't go, Dad. Okay. Don't. They expect that, oh yeah, oh, yeah Mom's coming. Okay. I know mm -hmm. she's coming one day this yeah. weekend. Right. She'll just show up. My oh, mom yeah. just does that. Yeah, and that's what he did. And it was a tradition. It. Yeah. it was a tradition. And it's okay. And it's okay. So we have had a great time today talking about uh, the dynamics of the parent-teacher-student relationship. Um, I'm going to wrap up. And before I wrap up, a couple of things that I want to say. Ephesians 6, 4, 1 to 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a, per with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you that you may enjoy your life or enjoy long life mm -hmm. on this earth. Fathers, do not 
provoke your children to wrath. Exactly. Fathers do not exasperate your children. Mm -hmm. Instead, do bring that. them up in the training and in the instruction of the <laughs> Lord. Right. When I was wrapping up or thinking about wrapping up last night, this is the scripture that the Lord laid on my heart. And what it taught me or reminded me is that responsibility has two roles in the scripture. There's a responsibility for the children and there's a responsibility for the parents. Exactly. You know, and so um, I'm not a single mom. And so I tip my hats off to each and every single Definitely. mom, single dad that's it's out there trying to hold it down because it is a lot. Yes, you indeed. know, and so I just pray that. Um, you got something from this conversation and I pray also too that um, you know you can get some of the help that you need out Definitely. there with no condemnation you know right. we, nobody has time to judge people right. and their parenting styles if you can help them right. please add a kind word to the conversation right. and if you can have the child sit in your room you know and I'm sure a lot of teachers do things like Definitely. that you know they, they do give extra care to some students that they feel that they are in need That's and right. so I just pray that um, you will just keep God in your life and he will strengthen you. You know, Annie made a comment that, you know, for her, that's what she needed in her life. Definitely. That's what I need in my life. And Me I know too. that that's what Definitely. Sharon needs in hers. And so I pray that um, this conversation blessed you, that it enriched you, that it enlightened and you. And the teacher. And that the teacher. going through that will keep her in prayer also. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, and the child. Yeah. 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 We, they the all child. need it. The parent mm -hmm. needs it. The student needs it. Right. The teacher needs it. Exactly. You know, and so thank you guys for watching. I know that you've seen a couple of the promotional items behind us. Um, if you are interested in any of the promotional items, <laughs> my book, Self Chronicles, as well as the t-shirts that's going on behind me in the screen, you can go to my website, which is thepamelaj.com. Um, and this show will be uploaded on my YouTube channel, The Pamela J Show, about momentarily. So by tomorrow morning, it should be up. And don't forget that you can always tune into the WBGR Gospel Network to tune into this show as well as some other shows. I want to be one of those persons that support my, my colleagues because I want us all to rise. Definitely. And so I just pray that you guys have a blessed week. I won't be back next week unless we're going to just be in rotation. And so you have a blessed holiday um, Thanksgiving weekend on next Thursday. Um, eat a lot, but don't eat too much. Hmm. <laughs> I'll be in too South late. Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for watching. You guys have a blessed week and see you next time on the Pamela Jane Show.